Coldheart is one of the most influential and underrated members of the underground, as well as cloud rap in general. He helped to create and shift genres during his time making music, and let me tell you, that time has not been short, because at this point in 2024, Coldheart has been making music for over 10 years, and he's also worked with some pretty influential people during that time. And we'll soon find out about all of that when we look into the story of Coldheart. Jarek J. Quilisado, I'm sorry guys, the Asian names, I know you got on me for kid trunks, but I try my best, was born August 3rd, 1994 in Long Beach. California, being the oldest of three siblings with a younger brother and sister. His father is a construction worker and his mother is a nurse, and he also has a cousin who's also a rapper known as Roscoe who grew up one city over from Long Beach. It's always so interesting to see when two people from the same family become musicians, especially since Coldheart and Roscoe kind of grew up together but they didn't see each other every day, meaning that they both spun off into their own musical careers completely independent of each other. During Coldheart's childhood, he became interested in skateboarding and the alternative scene, switching between skater clothes and a more colorful hipster style during his time in school, as well as listening to music from both the world of rap and punk. On the punk side of things, we got Blink-182 and Nirvana, and when it comes to the world of rap, he listened to artists like Chief Keef, Soldier Boy, and he even bought his first physical album at the age of 8, which was 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying. As he grew into his teen years, he became aware of sites like Tumblr and Daft Piff, where he discovered online artists with cult fan bases like Blade, Young Lean, and Black Cray, who mixed both of his favorite genres into one style. Coldheart would fall in love with the sound and decide he wanted to become part of it, teaching himself how to make beats at the age of 17, and because of that, he eventually lost all interest in school and started ditching every day until finally deciding to drop out in grade 10. But to be fair, he really never had that much of an interest in the first place. Although he would do online classes to receive his diploma a few years later. You know, in case you were worried that this guy wasn't educated, I know a lot of you were probably concerned about that. Another notable interest he had at the time was tattooing, teaching himself how to do it around the age of 18, and even experimenting on himself by tatting his entire left hand, which his parents definitely didn't approve of, but would later come around on. For the next couple years, Coldheart would continue to create beats under the name Jay Yak, dropping multiple beat compilation mixtapes throughout 2012. He actually dropped around 36 of these, that's insane. As well as also building up his influence on Tumblr, eventually getting to produce a beat for the rapper Lil B on his track Thug's Pain, which propelled his name across the internet. This is when the artist Wicked Phase became aware of him, who at the time was part of the band Tiger Jaws, which Coldheart just so happened to be a fan of. Wicked would first become aware of him through Tumblr, and he would start to listen to his beats as well, noticing how unique they were with real recorded instrumentals as well as a dark darker tone not commonly found online at the time. Wicked would hop on one of these beats and after Coldheart noticed that, the two started talking and became fast friends, mostly only through the internet at the time though. But Wicked wasn't the only one to notice Coldheart's beats because another artist from the OG SoundCloud scene known as Bones would also notice him. He ended up recording on a couple of Coldheart's beats and before long they built up a business relationship and in 2013 Bones would even ask Coldheart to join his collective known as Team Sash. Once again this was mostly only an online connection but eventually Coldheart would get to meet Bones in person when they went to a live show. Before long, only creating beats wasn't fulfilling enough for Jay, so he decided to start recording his own vocals under the rap name Cold Heart Rich Boy, dropping his White Wall EP in mid-2013, before then deciding to shorten his name to just Cold Heart later that year. Now, unfortunately, we can't really look at a lot of his early music because unfortunately many of them became lost over the years, mostly because they were posted on the now-defunct Daft Piff website, but in recent years there has been a big effort from fans to uncover his lost releases, and they made quite a few strives, so hopefully eventually we'll have his whole catalog. However, there is one release that I feel is worth mentioning from this year, a collab EP that Coldheart created with the producer known as Ned Arb called Revenge. It's cool to see that these two would work with each other as far back as 2013 and it wasn't long before they as well formed a pretty strong friendship. Once 2014 rolled around, the artists Magnet, Young Bra, and Wiccaface decided to form their own collective called Thrax House that had a much more experimental sound than other collectives around the time. This was very attractive for Coldheart who had decided to leave Team Sash in favor of joining Thrax House, which made Bones very upset at the time, but luckily the two would have eventually make up a couple years later. After Coldheart got connected to Mac Ned through Horsehead, they would become close friends, and eventually Ned decided to fly Coldheart out to LA to be part of the group in person. And as I always say in these videos, this environment was very different than anything Coldheart had seen before. A house full of SoundCloud rappers sipping lean, popping Zans, and getting fucked up every single day. I mean, it's not really certain what his drug use was like before this point, but we can only assume living in this type of environment, it increased by quite a bit. And through Thrax House, he got the chance to perform live for the first time, doing several warehouse shows all across LA. He would also drop several EPs this year, including In the Night, Until the Light Takes Me, the latter of which includes an early collaboration with Wicca Face. Eventually Thrax House would start to expand to include over 30 rappers. Meanwhile, Coldheart and Wicca continued making music together with songs like Heaven and Black Makeup. And of course, Coldheart wouldn't stop creating beats either, eventually creating one that he named Gothboy Click, which Wicca really seemed to like, tweeting out, retweet if you're Gothboy Click, meaning it to be a joke at first, but for one reason or another, it stuck. For the next couple years, it remained as nothing more than a 
catchphrase they would yell out on songs, as well as the way that they would brand themselves whenever they released a new clothing drop, but eventually it would form into a full-on group. Thraxos was growing to the point it was becoming unmanageable, so Coldheart and Wicca, alongside an artist from Sweden named Ghost, decided to form the group up and take along the more melodic, focused rappers from Thrax House. This would include members like Macned, Young Bruh, and Horsehead, but unfortunately it wasn't long before Ghost decided he wanted to leave the group to pursue other endeavors, but with his departure came the introduction of more members like Fishnark, Yawns, and Doves, who were all producers. The group would immediately start experimenting with their sound by sampling many of their favorite bands and then uploading the songs to a shared Bandcamp account. And this is actually where Coldheart would drop his Promise mixtape, which included a Young Bruh feature, but eventually he discovered SoundCloud and began uploading on there instead. And then in 2015, Coldheart would drop his first project on the app called Lil Nelly that actually included production from Grief, another member of Team Sash. And I also just want to mention that Coldheart has several songs with Lil Soda Boy, which I had no idea at all was actually an OG in the SoundCloud scene. If you're not aware of him, he's actually the guy who sold Jumix most of his most popular songs, including Billie Eilish, uh, so really weird connection there. Anyways, I digress. In 2016, most of the members of GBC would finally move in together, minus Wicca Phase, and this is where they began working on a group project called Yeah It's True, which would then drop halfway through the year. This is also the same year that Coldheart discovered the Click's 10th and final member, Lil Peep, through his song Little Hell, produced by John Mello. After he listened to the song, he would start to look into Peep, noticing he often wore Thrax House and GBC merch in all his pictures, deciding to reach out to him through Twitter DMs. Now, this was back in 2015 when Peep still lived in Denver and was a member of Schema Posse, so joining GBC wasn't an immediate option. Despite that though, the two would start working on music together through the internet, eventually creating the track Dying, which appeared on Peep's Crybaby EP. So before we get into this next part, I kind of fucked up what songs went on what albums, so basically Dying is a single, it didn't actually appear on Crybaby, so don't pay any attention to that when I say that. Big City Blues actually did appear on Crybaby, that wasn't a single, and then Black Jeep actually did appear on a Magnum mixtape, I didn't mention that, but that's where that song went, and then finally I Crash, You Crash actually didn't appear on Hellboy, it was a single, so now that we got that all cleared up, let's go into the Peep music, as well as the song Big City Blues, and they even planned to create a whole EP together called Peep Heart, but unfortunately never got the chance to finish it before Peep's passing. And on top of that, Coldheart would also produce the song Skyscrapers off the same mixtape. Most of their music was created over the internet through email, but they would eventually meet in person on the Ham Radio podcast. After that, Peep moved to LA and formed friendships with Magnet and Lil Tracy, formerly Young Bra. And the rest is history. He would join GBC not long after that, or before that technically, the timeline's a little confusing. However, there actually was one time that Coldheart and Lil Peep actually got the chance to record a track in person, and that was the song Black Jeep featuring Magnet, meant to appear on the Ill Fate at Peep Heart project. After that, Coldheart would also continue to produce for Lil Peep, getting a credit on Hellboy for the iconic track You Crash, I Crash. Unfortunately, Peep and Coldheart's time was short together because in late 2017, Peep would pass away. Now, as we all know, this would happen on the Come Over When You're Sober tour, but it actually turns out that Coldheart wasn't there for a good majority of it. He would drop in on the 7th of November to kick it with the members who were actually currently on tour and see Peep one last time, although he didn't know it. He remained hanging out with them until the 15th of November when Peep would actually pass away. And now when it comes to Peep's passing, there was a huge fallout in both the fan base, the GBC, and many other rappers and producers surrounding the situation, all pouring online to fight each other and argue over whose fault it was. But surprisingly, Coldheart never got caught up in this backlash, managing to stay in fans' good graces as well as even forming a close connection to Peep's mother Liza. But that's not to say the events of this situation didn't shake him up, because the very next year, he would leave LA and move to New York, in hopes of getting away from the partying lifestyle that had taken his friend away. And when he left LA, he decided to bring along with him yawns, and together the two dropped the project, Wish Me Well, which included a song called Through the Screen that went on to become Coldheart's biggest song not to feature Lil Peep. Now we don't know this for sure, but if you listen to a lot of Coldheart's music, you can put together the fact he had a long-term girlfriend who he seemed to be in a very toxic relationship with. It's possible this was only said to add lyrical substance to his music, but if not, it seems like they also broke up around the same time, which meant that Coldheart needed a big change. So what did he do? Him and Yawns locked themselves in the studio and went back to work, putting together his debut album, Goodbye Cruel World, which was comprised of songs with real life instruments, calling back to his early days, creating his own beats in the same style. The two immediately started to promote the project on social media and even dropped three singles, including music videos, to drum up hype for the release. During Coldheart's time in New York, he would also tap in with an early form of the Masquerilla podcast and give fans more perspective into his life, as well as continuing to work with Wiggy, a videographer mostly known for creating music videos for Favorite Dress and Cobain by Lil Tracy and Lil Peep. Not long after that, the two would finally drop the full project in 2019 to somewhat mixed reviews, which isn't surprising, most critics don't really like the more experimental sounds, well, except Fantano, but we don't really have to take his opinion on anything that seriously. It's also not surprising because it was kind of a switch up from his regular sound and subject matter, delving more into themes of healing, moving on, 
fun, finding motivation even in the darkest days, and it wasn't just your regular I'm sad and on drugs music that he usually made before this point. Which makes a lot of sense because he wasn't at that point in his life anymore and he was starting to heal, feel better, and get away from the toxic people who were tearing his life apart. In that very same year, he actually ended up proposing to his girlfriend known as Jimmy Toast Online, who happens to run a jewelry brand in New York. In 2020, the pandemic hit and Coldheart, just like the rest of the world, was locked inside with not much to do besides make music and spend time with his wife, dropping his project Blissville and becoming a father that very same year. In July, an unreleased collaboration track between Peep and Coldheart named Me and You finally saw an official release, leading Liza and Hart to go on live and celebrate. This also would become Coldheart's biggest song to date. In the years after its release, Coldheart would start to move his way into the background, doing small time shows around the country and working on music, dropping Every Day is a Day in 2021, followed by the OC Season 3 in 2022. In 2023, Coldheart would make his way into the Lil Peep story once again when he went to court and testified against Peep's label, helping Liza to win the court case and get full control over her son's legacy. Which of course would only strengthen the love for Coldheart among Peep fans. As for 2024 and beyond, well, it seems like Coldheart's going to continue down the same path. He's told many publications he no longer wants to be a rock star or bask in the praise of the public and instead just wants to support his family and keep out of the way. And recently, he actually moved out of New York, choosing to go to the country to live a much simpler life. And overall, it's just nice to see one of the rappers from the early SoundCloud scene get a happy ending. Getting far away from the toxic environment he once lived in with the drugs, the drama, and everything else included. So big shout out to Coldheart, and let's hope he continues doing what he loves for many more years to come. And of course, rest in peace little peep, shout out Knife Gang, if you like this video, leave a knife emoji in the comments below, and subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thanks for watching.